Um, the other thing we'll talk about then, because we're, we're pressed for time, is I wanted to get your take on this uh, MJF situation, because the other dirt sheets are continuing to write this as if it's real, in terms of saying that MJF has really been removed from all advertising, uh, MGF walked out of this building. MGF had a flight booked. My understanding is, is that initially, like, Sean Ross Sapp was being sent stuff when he really believed it was real, like a flight ticket. Um, I'm I'm very happy to go on shows and say, Dave Meltzer will always know more about me than AEW. I, I think it goes as far as to say that Dave Meltzer is even involved in ideas that AEW do. It's because I believe that Meltzer knows or who the, who the next champion is, who the next challenger is, and I gets asked for his opinion of it, and he is 100% being paid to, to put this story out as if, it's, as if it's real. But I know it's a work. I was the first person to, to say it's a work. What do you think of this in terms of paying off the dirt sheets? In, in your day, was there ever any consideration where you had a story that you wanted people to believe so much? Let's even look back to that. Did Jeff Jarrett cut that shoot promo, the one that got Austin hot? Was there yeah. ever any thought of saying, we want something to be seen as a shoot so badly that we're going to tell people that, you know, we're going to leak stuff out to these people? Billy, I'm going to tell you something. We, uh, Jeff, Jeff Lane, you know, brought up your comments to me. I think it was on castrating the marks. And when he brought up your comments, I was like, bro, he's dead on. He's dead on. And I'm going to tell you why, Billy. I'm going to tell you why you're dead on. You and I both know. you And, and here's where you, you differ from them. I differ from them. You and I both know. What did he, what, what part, what did he read, by the way? Do you remember? The, the, the part of, of, of them being involved in the work and oh, right, getting, okay. getting oh, Tony Khan's yeah. information out. Yeah. Right. Bro, you and I both know. They all so badly want to be a part of the business. Right. That is the hope and that is the dream. Bro, they would cut off a limb to go work for Tony Khan or to go work for Vince. They so badly want to be a part of the business because they're not. And they know they, they're not. They try to make it look like they, they are. They're not and they know it. So now all of a sudden, bro, if you have Tony Khan saying, Hey, Dave, listen, man, you know, Sean, hey, I want you to get this out, that out, and the other thing out. Bro, in their minds, now they're part of the business. Now they are working an angle with orders from Tony Khan. And, bro, seriously, like, it's one thing It's one thing if they turn around and say, okay, Tony, how much are you going to pay me to do that? that? That's what I would do. That would be my first thing. All right, Tony, you want me to put that out? What are you paying me to put that out? Bro, these guys are doing it for free. They don't want a penny. In their mind, bro, it legitimizes them. And that's why when you when you said that, bro, it added a whole new level. And here, here's another thing, Billy, that pisses me off more than anything else. Now they're charging people to work them? So, so their own customers that are now paying for insta inside and backstage information, they're working the current people, the, the people that are supporting them, which to me is like, you, you got to be kidding me, bro. And, and how do you get out of it? Like, do you obviously the, the out is going to be at some point it became a work, but whilst we were reporting it, it was a shoot. It's a work now. I know that because I've been told it is. And I was even to the point where I was told exactly what MJF was going to do. If, if you, when you, I don't know when you read my story, but my story was out on the Sunday and I said what MJF's character was about to become. And, and then he did the shoot promo, but where, what's that out? Like where, when are they going to turn around and go, Hey, um, it's a work now. Like, because they're, they're, obviously that bit has to come. Otherwise they lose all credibility with their customers. If they realize they were in on it. God, do, but do they Billy? Do they, these people that have been subscribing to Dave Meltzer for so long with as many times as he's been wrong, bro, would anything stop these people from not paying him anymore? Well, yeah. Yeah, that, that's we, true. Uh, with, the, with, this, with the statistics of Dave Meltzer, yeah, I think I think I, I, I give him credit some, uh, sometimes on a show and say that because here's the crazy thing. I know wrestlers 
who look forward to his star, who who check his star rating. Right. That to me, that is an established legacy in the business. I don't agree with it, but you know, at the moment, I feel that a lot of the wrestlers, we've got wrestlers that are more marks than than we've ever had before. Whereas before, we used to have a lot of athletes, and we used to have a lot of wrestlers that that have been in the business for a long time, and they didn't care about Dave. We now have the era of the guys who read the Wrestling Observer have now become the wrestlers and they are now waiting for the star ratings. In fact, even guys that I know and respect a lot do check the ratings. So for me, that should be his legacy, not news. I think one of the other things I, I learned actually was, um, I don't know if you can verify this or not, it's actually a little bit off topic, but was there actually ever a discussion where when Vince was going to go to jail, and Jerry Jarrett was going to run the company before, yeah. you, before you became a uh, head of career. A- absolutely. Well, 1000. That's what, that's why they brought Jerry Jarrett in. And, no, and that, that's the part I was going to say was, was Dave Meltzer interviewed to be part of career? Oh God. <laughs> I, listen, I, I don't, it was before I was there, but I would highly, highly doubt that I could tell you without a shadow of a doubt that's why Jerry Jarrett was brought in, yep. and that's why Pritchard and like uh, Pat Patterson. That's why they always, always had heat with Jerry Jarrett, and we're always trying to bury him. Because I, since 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 I've been on your show while I've been while I've been here, like at one point I, I never emailed you about it or anything, but somebody did say to me one of the reasons why there's there's heat on Russo with Meltzer is because Russo took Meltzer's job. Melter oh, thought he had it. God. Melter oh. thought he had that. Melter thought he had that job in the back. Oh my! And, God, I don't know if you know. Bro. I don't know if you know about that yourself. Like, or bro, whether, I, 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 whether I, it's I, a I, story. Bro, I told you, man. Finkel's Howard Finkel's job way back in the day was to um, give everybody the melts. They, they we they used to call it the Stooge Report, right. and they would he would pass along to the top top level all the all the stuff Meltzer was saying and bro, the whole point behind it. What I mean, bro, they were mocking him. They, they were laughing at him and everybody used to look forward to getting this report because he used to make such a horse's ass out of himself because so much of it was wrong. So for, for him to kind of be the, the, the butt end of their jokes, but they're also going considering bringing him into work for the company. I've I've never heard that before in my life. Yeah, it's been, it's been, it's been put out there by Alvarez actually saying. That, oh my uh, God! Dave, of course. Dave's been, Dave's been interviewed numerous times. Yo, what up? This is Conan, and I host Keeping It One Hundred. My co-host Disco Inferno, unfortunately. Well, I'd say you're my co-host. Listen, every Thursday here on Spreaker, we talk pro wrestling, sports, movies, music, TV, pop culture, and some politics. It's everything the rest of the pro wrestling podcasts are not. Tune in to hear myself, the superior one, educate and inform. Tune in to hear me bury Disco. That's very disrespectful. Join us every Thursday on Spreaker and keep it 100. Boom!